Hello, hello. Welcome to Juju Be DIY. I'm Sarah. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm making Easter gingerbread DIYs. I'm joining two of my friends, so if you want to see what I made, stay tuned. For our first DIY, we're going to use one of these Dollar Tree birdhouses and some small craft sticks. I'm going to cut down a length of craft stick so that it goes a little bit lower than the roof line. I'll just use my pencil to create the line and then cut them with a pair of scissors and sand it down. And I end up using seven craft sticks on each side of this birdhouse and I'll paint some white and some pink. Next, I'm going to use a jumbo craft stick and I'm going to just cut down a piece to make a door. And then using that same craft stick, I'm going to measure out one inch pieces to create windows. So I'll have two one inch pieces from the same craft stick. And I'll just, again, use my pencil to mark that off and use my scissors to cut it down. Next, I'm gonna paint my little house pink. You could do any color you'd like. This would be adorable if you had a whole city of little Easter gingerbread houses. I think this would be so cute, but I'm just going to show you one in pink. So I painted everything pink and now I'm going to glue those craft sticks onto my roof line to create that white and pink alternate kind of like a awning sort of is kind of the thought that was I think behind this. So I had found some actual gingerbread houses and the creator had done this white and pink or white and whatever color alternate roof line and I thought it was so cute. So I painted my front door white and then I added a piece of craft stick on the back uh, just to cover that hole of the birdhouse. Next I used my pencil and a ruler to create a frame for my windows and then I just painted the frame pink. But again you could use any colors you wanted if you wanted to do all kinds of different colors on one house you could and it would look adorable I think. So now I'm going to create some faux icing. I am just going to use some Dollar Tree spackle here and I'm going to put this into a jar um, and then I'm going to add in some apple barrel white acrylic paint. I'm just going to add enough to make it kind of a um, like an icing consistency really. You just want something that you can pipe out that isn't going to fall off but it'll be like stiff enough that you can actually make the shape of the piping um, tip. And I'm going to use a plastic bag. I didn't have any piping bags, so uh, this is a great alternative. If you don't have one, just cut off a corner of a plastic bag. Just make sure that your the corner that you cut isn't bigger than your piping tip. And you just push that piping tip down until it's nice and snug in that corner. And then you can just use the plastic bag as your piping bag. And I'm just going to put this spackle into this plastic baggie here. I'll just scoop it in. And yeah, it works great for a piping bag. I didn't have any issues. Now I'm going to pipe my faux icing onto my little house here. I'm going to go across the peak of the house and then I'm going to do some icing along the roof line in the front and in the back. And that'll be all of the icing that I do on the house. I wanted the roof line to stay uh, that kind of scalloped look on the edge and I didn't want to add any more icing, so I didn't. But you could add all the icing you want if you want to do the corners of your houses. You could, and it would look really cute. Next, I'm going to add some of these little faux candy cane pieces. They're like white and pink striped faux candies. I got them off of Timu, but I know um, Amazon carries them. You can get these pretty much everywhere. And then I just added a little faux candy piece to the very front there. Next, I have these little wood carrots from the Dollar Tree. I got these last year, so I'm hoping that they will have them again this year. I just painted them like a carrot, and then using my white Posca paint pen, which is running out in case you can't tell, um, I painted some stripes on my carrots and then added some little dots at the top. This is a little wood piece I got from 
the Dollar Tree last year, I think, it was like a little eight pack or nine pack of different little wood pieces that had different bunnies and eggs and stuff in it. And then I have these little wood flowers. I believe that these came from Timu, but again, you can find these little wood flowers in all kinds of places, or you could just use real flowers if you want, or not real flowers, but fake flowers. <laughs> now I'm going to glue my house onto one of these square wood pieces. This came from the Dollar Tree, and I just painted it with the celery from Waverly, and then using that same piping um, faux piping or faux frosting recipe. I just mixed the celery in there instead of the white paint. And then I am going to pipe that all over that little plaque so that it looks like grass. Next, I'm going to use some of these little M&Ms. These are just faux M&Ms that I got off of Amazon. And then I'm going to add in the eggs. I added some little faux candies along the side, added a faux pink and white peppermint um, on each corner of the house, and those little bunnies, those came from Timu, I think, or maybe they were Dollar Tree, I can't remember, but they're just a couple little wood bunnies, they were small wood bunnies, and they were perfect, and I put those little carrots on the top of the house, I think that was just so cute. And then I added a little bow to the front there. And you don't want to forget that door handle. We want our little people, gingerbread men or whoever is living in this house to be able to get in. So I'm going to add a little handle there. And here is a look at the final result. I think that this little gingerbread house turned out so cute and is perfect for an Easter theme. I'm joining two of my friends to celebrate Easter in the gingerbread style. If you guys have been around my channel for a while, you know Jackie from Crafting in a Mimi's World. She is the gingerbread queen. She loves gingerbread for Christmas, Valentine's, and now Easter. And we are joining our friend Dawn from Shabby Meets Bling. She loves gingerbread too. And I am so excited to be collaborating with these ladies to celebrate Easter in the gingerbread style. Make sure you go check out their videos to see what they're creating in today's collaboration. I'll leave links down in my description box below. For this DIY, we're going to use the Dollar Tree dice, wood dice. I just gave those a couple coats of white paint. And then I'm going to use some stickers that I picked out from the Dollar Tree. I liked the font. And so I'm going to add these to the front of the blocks. I'm using the ruler here just to make sure that my letters are in the same area. So when they're side by side, they look like they're on the same line, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of using the ruler there to make sure that I get it, um, the bottom of the letter in the same spot from the bottom of the circle, if that makes sense. Then I'm gonna paint the fronts of these over the stickers with Four different colors so i'll use pink yellow green and blue and i'm just gonna paint um the little circle that is the the dice so do the dice have like a flat side where it's like a circle and i just followed that circle if you have those dice you'll know what i'm talking about um, and then i just peeled the stickers off to leave the white background and then i cleaned up any messes that i made with white paint Next, I'm going to use a stylus and some more white paint to create some cute little polka dots on each of these blocks. And I think this is so cute. I love polka dots. I'm going to use two of these little gingerbread men from this ornament kit that I picked up at Michael's at Christmas time. I'm going to use my scissors to just clip off the ornament part. And then using some sandpaper, I'll just sand that down to make it nice and round and to. Um, create, you know, make sure there aren't any rough edges. And then I'll paint those with the Waverly chalk paint in hazelnut. Um, instead of painting on a face, I am just going to stamp on a face. I am using my Peachy Keen stamps. I love these stamps. And then I'm using a water, waterproof ink to stamp. And you can see there, I'm just, I didn't want the eyebrows on there. So I'm just rubbing the eyebrows off before I stamp it so that they don't stamp onto my gingerbread men. The eyebrows are cute, but they just weren't in the right place 
for this gingerbread man. So I just rubbed those off so that they won't stamp. And then I just stamped his little face. So cute. I'm going to paint in his cheeks and his nose using some pink. And then I will use yellow, green, and blue to put some little buttons on the front. I didn't show doing that, but you'll see it here in a little bit that those have little buttons on them eventually. Using my white Posca paint pen, I am going to add some faux frosting. I painted up a white egg from the Dollar Tree and then used that dotting tool to create um, some polka dots in the colors that I used, the pink, yellow, green, and blue. <laughs> and then I painted up a couple of little bunnies from the Dollar Tree and those will all go on the tops of my blocks. And here is a look at how they turned out. I think that these are adorable. For this project, we're gonna use one of the Walmart gnomes. I painted his beard white, his nose peach, and his shoes a dark blue. I thought that the dark blue would be nice since I was using pastel colors. I used my pencil to create a brim, just kind of going along with the bottom of the brim. And then I used my ruler to create some stripes. We are gonna use two hearts. These are from the Crafter Square section. They come in a package with stars, hearts, and flowers. And I'm just gonna use the, the hearts. Next, I am going to use a little bit of washi tape here to mark off the top edge. And then I'm gonna carefully use a paintbrush, you know, just freehand it along that pink line. And I have sped this up quite a bit here but I did really take my time and make sure that I was following that pink line as best as possible so that it kind of kept that shape, that kind of wavy shape, the bottom of the hat had because I wanted that brim to kind of follow that. So then once I am done painting this color, then I will let it dry and then I will add washi tape, um, to the next stripe, so each side of the next stripe, and I will paint that in. And I will continue this pattern until I'm done painting it. I did go in a color pattern of pink, yellow, green, and blue. And as you can see, turned out cute. This is a flower, wood flower, that I got from 24 Hour Crafts. And then I had the little gingerbread men from the Dollar Tree Christmas time, egg from the Dollar Tree, and those mittens I had in my stash already. I had a whole bunch of these like wood mittens for some reason for quite a few years, but you could get onto 24 hour crafts and they have little mittens that you can order in like a one inch size. And I think that that would be perfect for these gnomes. So for this little egg, I wanted to add some polka dots and I'm just using my paint pen here to create some random polka dots in different kind of sizes. And to create a good pattern, you wanna make sure that your pattern goes off of the egg a little bit. It makes it look more natural and like it's, you know, like an actual pattern. Next, I had these little heart, no. What are those flowers? little flower buttons in my stash and I wanted to add some of this yellow and white baker's twine from the Dollar Tree so I am just using a needle threader here to thread the um, twine the baker's twine into the holes of the button so you could definitely use needle if you've got one that's got an eye big enough that you can get that baker's twine through I didn't have one on hand I do have one somewhere but I couldn't find it and this needle threader was sitting right there so I decided to use it to do this part of the project I'm just gonna knot that and then I will cut those little ends off so that they are a more manageable you know not so so stringy and long Look how cute that is. And then I will just glue those to the center of those mittens. Now I'm going to add some details, adding some dashes and dots along the brim of my little hat here. This is just going to separate the 
hat so that it really looks like a brim here. And I'm just going to add some polka dots kind of to the middle of that. And again, this is just going to make it look, you know, really portion out that brim so that it definitely looks like a brim and not just part of the hat. I'll add some little shine to his nose. And then in between each of the stripes, I'm just going to add some dots of white paint. And I'll do that to all of the stripes. And then I'm going to go in and add some shine to his shoes and um, adding a little bit of paint there in the middle so that it can really separate out those shoes. Now we're going to add the hearts to make the body. And the way I do it is that I just kind of line up that top part of the beard with the edge of the heart. And I'll just glue that down with some hot glue. And for the other side, you do exactly the same thing. Just make sure that the hot glue um, is connected to the beard and not the other heart, if that makes any sense. So now I marked off where my little mittens were gonna go so that I could be, <laughs> this is kind of really kind of weird to explain, but I wanted to make sure that the twine was going to be in the right spot for when I glue it on. So I marked the mittens where they were going to sit. And now I am just adding my little banner decorations to that twine. And I am just going to add a little bit of hot glue to the backs of those wood pieces and put them on the twine. Now I'm going to lay the twine back across the area where the glove is going to sit and I will just hot glue the glove right to um, the gnome and right across that piece of twine. So hopefully that makes sense. And then I will just add the little flower to the top of the gnome. It's so cute. I love how this one turned out. Next, I wanted my gnome to be able to stand up. So I'm taking three tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue them together. And then I'm gonna glue them to the back of the gnome in the area of his shoes. And that'll make it so that he can stand up. And here is a look at how this turned out. I love this one so much. For our last DIY, I am going to use some of these Dollar Tree ornaments. I am using the bunny, the egg, and the carrot. And I gave those a couple coats of the Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut. That's kind of my favorite color to use for gingerbread, but you could use any color that reminds you of gingerbread. And then I'm going to add some faux frosting using puff paint. This puff paint here came from Walmart. There are lots of different brands, one major brand being Tulip. You can find those in lots of places, almost probably every craft store, Walmart, you know. So uh, I'm going to go around the edge of my faux cookie here, and then I'm going to create a pattern inside. And if you need some ideas on some patterns to make your cookies look yummy <laughs> definitely check out pinterest there are so many amazingly talented people out there that are doing some awesome stuff with um decorating cookies it's crazy so just look up gingerbread cookies and you'll find tons and tons of ideas for you know filling up your cookies here's what i came up with take a screenshot if you want to copy what i did or need some extra inspiration so i want to make this into a garland and my trick for that is to add a bead to the backs of these ornaments. So instead of putting twine through the hole and then hanging it from the jute twine string hanger that you're going to put on the wall or whatever, um, I just add a bead to the back and I'm placing it so that the opening of the bead is side to side. And I'll show you a better picture of that or show you a better image of that here in just a second. But to cover that hole up in the front of each of these, I'm just gonna add a little jute twine bow, just a little mini one to make it cute and cover that hole up. As you can see, that bead is sitting side to side. And that way we can string our 
little ornaments right onto the jute twine. So I'm going to use a bead threader. This thing is very cool if you do a lot of garlands using beads and stuff. Um, this is a very handy tool. So I'm just going to put the beads through, or actually put the bead threader, threader through the beads, and then I'm going to pull that twine through. And it's so easy. Like, it makes it so much easier. Anyhow, I'm going to put some ribbon in between each of these cookies. I am going to cut 12 inch strips of ribbon in whatever colors I want. I decided to stick with my theme of green, yellow, blue, and pink. And then I added some of the lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm putting it, uh, using a lark knot to add these onto my jute twine. And that's basically just making an awareness ribbon and then pulling the ends through so that they knot over the top of your jute twine. So you're just gonna add the loop, pull up the ends, and make that lark knot. And I will just continue this pattern in between each of my cookies. And that is basically it for this project. I love how this turned out. I think it is so pretty and uh, looks delicious to me. What do you think? I want to thank Jackie and Dawn for joining me in this collaboration today. That's all I have for you. Let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. And thank you so much for watching. It's been a while since I've been here, but I am back and I am excited to start sharing some really great ideas with you. Have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Bye.